Hello and welcome to another Geo Explainer video! Woo -woo! Today I will tell you about the water cycle and how it rains, because we already know how the climates work and we already know the temperature factors. But why does it rain and where does the rain come from? That you will learn in today's episode. Woo! Alright Franz, are you ready? So, to understand why it rains, we first need to understand where does the water come from? Because, you know, all this rain, where does it even come from? Like, of course, out of the air, duh, but where does the water originate from? So, from here, from our small observation area, we will start explaining the water cycle. The water cycle. The water cycle has three steps. Step one is evaporation, step two is condensation, and then step three is precipitation. We will go through them one by one. Besides the three steps, the water cycle can also be done in two ways, namely the short water cycle and the long water cycle. Each of those two ways all have the three steps, only the place where the precipitation happens is different. But let's go to step one, evaporation. When it's nice and warm on water, the water evaporates. It's like when you make tea. And when you put the tea into a cup, you see small little water droplets or damp going up into the air and turning into invisible water vapor. Or water gases. So step one, evaporation is, is liquid water turns into water vapor, invisible gas. So again due to the heat the water warms up and water vapor starts rising. And as this water vapor rises, it gets cooler. Remember from the mountain, from the altitude temperature factor, the higher you go, the colder it gets. And at some point, it is so cold that the water vapor condensates and forms a cloud. So number two, condensation is water vapor cools down and forms cloud. And those are those little white fluffy things in the sky. Of course, they are the real ones, but I made a fake one. And when the cloud is big enough and the rain, the droplets are big enough, it can start precipitating. For example, it starts raining. So step three, three, precipitation is the deposition of moisture from the atmosphere onto the Earth's surface. And this can be in the form of rain, snow or hail. So let's go over that again. The water cycle has three steps, evaporation, condensation, and precipitation. That's right, Franz. So the first step is evaporation. This is where water from the ocean turns into small gassy water vapor parts. These water vapor parts rise up into the sky and because it gets colder, this water vapor turns back into small droplets and all these small droplets form a cloud. That is number two, condensation. And when the cloud is heavy enough, there will be precipitation. The moisture from the atmosphere will fall back onto earth. And this can either be done in rain, in snow or in hail. 
So now the short and long water cycle. This is the short water cycle. The short water cycle, short water cycle, means that the water evaporates from the ocean. Then it goes into a cloud, but then it precipitates back in the ocean. So the short water cycle means that the water evaporates from the ocean, then it forms a cloud, it condensates, and then it precipitates back into the ocean. So the water left the ocean, but falls straight back into the ocean. It doesn't really leave the ocean in that way. Now you can probably guess that the long water cycle has something to do not with ocean, but with lands. So the long water cycle goes from ocean to cloud to land to precipitation on land and then back to the ocean meaning that again water evaporates from the ocean turns into a cloud but then this time it precipitates on land instead of back to the ocean so for example this cloud that is now here has been moved by the wind to over here and then it starts raining As you can see, the water now falls onto land and it creates, well, a big, very big river back into the ocean. This is the long water cycle because it went from the ocean up into a cloud then the wind brought it over to land and then on land it precipitates and eventually through a river or other ways, the water finds itself back into the ocean. That is the difference between a short and long water cycle. Basically, the short one goes from ocean to cloud back to the ocean, and the long one goes from ocean to cloud to land and then back to the ocean. Doesn't really matter which ocean it lands back into, then it's still always the short. As soon as the water lands on the land, it becomes the long water cycle. Now that you know how the water cycle works and how water from evaporation to condensation leads to precipitation, we can talk about places where different types of rain happen. The first is actually quite easy. It is called convectional rain. Convectional rain. Convectional rain is rain that forms when it is very hot and a lot of water evaporates and rises. So convectional rain is rain that forms when it is very hot and a lot of water evaporates due to the heat and then it rises. So places where you can expect convectional rain to happen are very warm places. Think of the A climates. In the A climate, remember, in the tropical jungle and rainforests and savanna, it is always warmer than 18 degrees, even in the coldest month. So this is a very, very warm place, very hot place. Therefore, you can find convectional rainfall usually near the equator near those A climates. And it's basically like this. It's hot, so the water evaporates, and then the water blows over to land, and it rains down, giving these places lots of rain. Now that we know convection rainfall, the rain that forms when it's very hot and a lot of water evaporates, we also need to look at another type of rain. The second type of rainfall you need to know which is called relief rainfall. And for that, Frans, we need to travel a little bit. 
Not that way, this way please, yes, thank you very much. So, imagine, once again, there is the water cycle, and it's the long one, because we are talking about precipitation above land. So first, there is still evaporation, and then, of course, condensation, the clouds. But then, the cloud travels. And as the cloud travels, of course, it loses some of its water. It precipitates above the land. Come, Franz. And as we move further and further, we bump into a mountain. This is where relief rainfall comes in place. Relief rainfall is rain that forms when air is blown against a mountain and is forced to rise. Oh. So, <laughs> relief rainfall is rain that forms when air is blown against a mountain and is forced to rise. We know from what, I, what we just discussed that when air rises, the water vapor turns into clouds and when it's cold enough and the cloud is big enough, it starts raining. Here, the clouds are fairly low, but because of the mountain, the clouds are forced to rise. The rule is that when air gets colder, the clouds are not as good as holding all their water. This usually happens on one side of the mountain, because as the cloud rises, it tries to get rid of all its water. And then on the other side of the mountain, maybe there's still a little bit water left, but most of it is already gone, causing for almost no precipitation to fall on the other side. And as you can see, this side of the mountain is much greener, has much more rain, than this side of the mountain. It's much drier and, well, there's almost no rain and no greeneries. These two sides have a name. The side where it rains is called the windward side. The windward side is the side which gets most of the relief rainfall. The other side, the drier side, is called the leeward side. This is the side which gets almost no relief rainfall. Or in other words, it's very dry. Maybe you remember, or the next time you go on holiday and you look at a mountain, you can usually see that one side is very green and luscious and has bushes and greeneries and maybe some farm fields. And that on the other side, it is, well, usually somewhat drier. This is because in general, the wind direction pushes the clouds to this side of the mountain, causing a lot of precipitation on this side and causing it to be very dry on this side, almost no precipitation. This is how mountains can influence the weather patterns. And this could be the reason why on one side of the mountain, the windward side, it could be a sea climate, a moderate climate, a temperate climate. And on the other side, it could be a bee climate, a dry climate, because it doesn't receive any of the rain. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new about rainfall and water cycles and evaporation, condensation, precipitation and relief rainfall with the mountains or convectional rainfall in warm places. We learned a lot today. Well, anyway, I hope you had a good time and leave a like and subscribe and I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye.